W3MMR. Okay, W3MMR, recognized uh, EG1G in the group, and uh, KE2ZNI, this is W2BNY. Yeah, okay, Chris, um, sort of a challenging morning here. We've got a lot of static on the band, and we've got sidebanders to the north and to the south. Um, frequency and down frequency, so it's a little bit, um, a little bit rough copy here sometimes. And, um, yeah, okay, on the strap-on leg keys, I used to um, do a lot of CW work. In fact, um, most of my time on uh, on amateur radio was CW until I got the AM bug about five years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, <coughs> one of those uh, <coughs> leg strap-on keys, and uh, that used to take Picnic locations, and uh, I used the uh, the strap-on light key, and uh, had a lot of fun with it. Uh, let's see here, what else is uh, going on? We got about 34 degrees here in Buffalo. I think we've got a sunny day coming up. And uh, okay, Chris, I'm mowing the lawn after the late uh, late in the year uh, activity, <laughs> but it's uh, certainly good for the lawn. To keep it up off of it and keep the blades uh, sort of short, even though they're in, the, in their dormant season. And uh, Japanese maples, they're a beautiful tree. Um, I'm a little surprised they, they've kept their leaves as long as uh, they have. And of course, that's always a, a bit of a problem if you get ice storms and so on. It really adds to the weight of the tree. And uh, right now, we've got watch on uh, the Great Lakes. Uh, it's been so warm, but all the Great Lakes are open, uh, which is not a good thing for us uh, on the shores of the Great Lakes, uh, because the, uh, the cold Canadian air is eventually going to hit, and uh, that's going to cause some, uh, some lake effect snow problems. Uh, we've had a very, a very late winter uh, so far. Um, not too many snow events and not too much lake effect snow, but um, we're just starting to get into the January, February time frame. <laughs> I, mean, I think uh, uh, with the open lakes causes us a little problem a little bit further down the road. So uh, Perry will uh, will pick you up here and then you can send it to uh, KE2ZNI. And uh, Perry, I, I didn't get the full story of, uh, I know your son was with you during Christmas, and um, I, I'm not sure if you got him on the air. I didn't hear him uh, on the air in some of your uh, transmissions, uh, but I'm sure it was a great uh, visit. I know he, uh, he flew back home, and uh, uh, it sounded like a family event. I'm curious if, uh, if he spent much time in, in the shack. So, uh, you know, Perry, uh, W3MMR in the group. This is W2BNY. W2BNY in the group, W3MMR. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Kevin, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yep, my son was here. He, uh, he left on Monday. Uh, it was a great time, an absolutely great time, Steve. Um, he didn't get in here and broadcast, but he was in here messing around with the soldering iron. I taught him how to solder, uh, so that was uh, that was real fun. He really enjoyed that. Um, he really had a had a fun time with that. I put some uh, some components on a on a piece of wafer board, on a piece of perf board, and. Stuck some uh, capacitors and resistors through there and had them connect them on the back side. And, and then the next night, I had him, uh, uh, you know, learn how to uh, learn how to lengthen wires and connect two wires together and had him uh, heat shrink them to uh, to protect the uh, to protect the solder joints there and uh, using the heat gun. And then had him connect uh, connect a relay or a relay, an LED, uh, 
uh, you know, to the, uh, to the, um, to the wires that he lengthened, and, uh, put a resistor on there, and had him solder on a resistor to the LED, to the one leg of the LED, and had him heat shrink those, those connections, and then had him hook it up to a, uh, to a 12-volt battery, and boy, oh boy, a 9-volt battery, and boy, was he all, <laughs> the excitement on his face, to see those LEDs and blue LEDs light up after he uh, he had soldered everything together made everything worth it, you know. I mean, it was it was it was worth it either way. But I mean, to see the satisfaction on the face on his face and the accomplishment, you know, in his eyes, and it was it was, it was something special. It was really cool. I, I made a couple of videos. They're on my YouTube channel <clears throat> of uh, of both of the uh, both the nights there when I was teaching him how to solder. So. It was it was really cool. It was, it was it was definitely something to uh to remember. And I'm sitting something that he'll remember uh I'm sure for a long time to come. I hope for a long time to come. But uh yep, happy new year guys. And nothing uh no new no new year's here. I mean it wasn't uh I don't party, I don't drink or anything like that, so spent a lot of time here in the sack. Yesterday on my day off, I got to go back to work today. But and New Year's Eve was spent here in the shack uh, for a short period of time. Then I went to bed nice and early because I had a, a long day of work on New Year's Eve there. So that's uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles. 21 degrees here this morning. The temperature is a little uh, a little more chilly than, than than it's been the past few days. It's uh, only been slightly below freezing, but we're under the low 20s this morning. I'm sure we'll both get down to the teens before the sun comes up. Back up to you, Kevin. And good morning. KA2Z and I in the group from W3 in the morning. KA2Z and I with a group. KK4GZQ. Good morning, everybody. Perry, Steve, Chris, Kevin. Hope I didn't miss anybody. The only thing I got notes on was what Steve was talking about the Japanese maples. And, um, uh, and they are wonderful. They are. Uh, I fool with them a lot, Steve, because I. When I pressure wash, you know, the chlorine and whatnot, that is one tree or one plant that the chlorine will uh, have some detrimental effects on. Got to be careful around those. I cover them. Every, you know, every one that I come around, I either cover them or, or just uh, basically don't wash around them much. But uh, beautiful trees. And good morning to you, Steve. And... Uh, I saw some of your videos with your son. I thought it was just absolutely a, an awesome thing. What else can you say? Very bright young man, and I know you're as proud as proud can be. Good time. Good that you and Frank and he had a had a memorable uh, get together down uh, when you went to the Jersey Shore and all. Anyway, I'm pulling around with my drive here. There we go. Anyway, and uh, I'm down to 11 days till free up and uh, 15 days till uh, actual surgery, I guess. That's what I've got my sights on, and uh, I'm busy still trying to eat right, lose a little bit more weight, anything I can do to make myself as healthy as I can be when I go under into this process. Here comes back up to Wisconsin. Thanks, guys, for letting me in. Good morning. KA2Z and I on the ground. KK4GZQ.
quick one. Well, we got the breaker and just somebody can uh, grab it real quick. Well, good morning. Good morning, Kevin. Steve and Perry. And uh, I see Chris in there. I don't think I'm missing anything else. I am. It's in the process. I think we're throwing out a couple of animals and trying to get all of them all situated so that uh, I can sit down here and uh, play the radio for a while. Uh, Hopefully it won't be uh, too bad on you. Uh, healing up and uh, you know, you know, and back to what you know what you're doing there. But, uh, you know, certainly it's over and uh, thing to look forward to, that's for sure. So, uh, we'll miss you when you're gone there, buddy. Uh, we'll miss you on the air. And uh, we'll look forward to your speedy return. And uh, good morning to you, Perry. You're, uh, you got a Signal here this morning. Uh, well, uh, quite nice in here this morning. About uh, five over nine, and uh, you know I'm kind of hearing the same noise that uh, Steve was talking about. Maybe not as bad, but there uh, seems to be uh, some uh, extracurricular uh, noise around this morning. Not as quiet as it was uh, yesterday uh, morning. That's for sure.
you know, it's been a, just a, a, a big trap for junk. <laughs> Got it all cleaned out. Going to put up a steel shelf, uh, one of those, you know, those chrome baker type shelves that you always see for sale. But that's what I have from my workbench here and a couple other places in the uh, the basement for storage. And I put one of those together. I've got it in the box out in the garage. Had it for a while. I put up next to washing machines and all of the bottles of uh, detergent and fabric stuff that you know that accumulate when you buy them on sale will go on them. You wonder. Uh, how many you really need, but uh, when they're around sale, you end up going through them eventually. So that's what, what's been happening around here. We've got a plethora of bottles and stuff like that that need to be stored. And, uh, yeah, Japanese maples. Uh, I think what happened to ours here is we had, uh, they always turn late, and they usually turn very bright orange or red. They're beautiful in the fall. And uh, we have one, it's, we jokingly refer to it as the world's largest dwarf giant Japanese maple. It's supposed to be a dwarf, but it, the thing is 30 feet high and 30 feet wide now. <laughs> it, uh, it really is it probably mislabeled. I don't thought it, but it's a beautiful tree. And it usually goes bright orange red. And we had a cold snap, and the leaves were still green on it. And uh, we had this very early cold snap in late October, early November. And uh, all the leaves just curled up and, you know, died in the green state. And eventually they finally have come down. That's what I was basically sucking up with the lawnmower after Christmas. But then we got some smaller ones that made it to the orange stage but hadn't dropped their leaves. And they still haven't dropped their leaves. And, uh, you know, uh, they're actually talking about, it looks like maybe a rain, rain, ice, mixy thing coming in on, like, Sunday night for a few days. I'm kind of concerned about that, because uh, they get any significant weight on there's going to be significant damages, uh, damage to the, the branches, because they're all very thin and brittle branches. So, I don't know, just go out there by hand and knock them off? I don't know. They don't seem like they want them off at this point. But, uh, we shall see. I, I, I don't know where those videos are. Maybe they're on your Facebook page or uh, on, uh, on your uh, your website or something. Yeah, that sounds uh, pretty cool. And yeah, I've had that. Uh, not so much side. We haven't gotten to the soldering stage yet. But my grandson, uh, uh, my grandson is uh, seven now. And well, last year we gave him the snap circuits. I don't know if you know what snap circuits are, but they're like electronic Legos. <laughs> And we gave him this big set, and, uh, you know, he's built all sorts of stuff with it. Uh, I remember uh, Christmas Day last year, we gave it to him. I helped him uh, put together a, uh, an AM receiver. And it was, I was kind of like, uh, you know, just looking at the schematic and trying to build it. But there's some, there's, sec there's, you end up with multiple layers of connections on those boards. I actually failed. <laughs> And then I first try to put it together and get it working, and uh, we're kind of running we're heading off to another uh, another uh, another house afterwards, and uh, didn't get it to work. But he rebuilt it and got it going. You know, he, he and his dad went through the instructions and did it the right way. <laughs> but he's he's doing that. He's sort of getting into cars now too, and uh, that's going to be fun. His dad's got a uh, my son Ben has a. 67 Volkswagen with a uh, hot rod. It's kind of like a Cal Custom type bug. You know, big, big fat tires in the back, little skinnies in the front. And uh, I forget what the engine's out to, but it's over a couple hundred horsepower with uh, with two downdraft, uh, two barrel Weber's on it. You know, a pair, you know, one on each side. Cool looking little car. He's got some electrical issues we're going through now. His alternator's act, acting weird. I'm trying to help him out with that. But anyhow, yeah, those, uh, boys are going to have fun playing with that. Me too. So let's see. I guess we'll keep it going here. It goes over to Steve up in Buffalo, and then uh, over to Perry. Yeah, well, you were right on cue there, Perry. That was yeah, maybe we're psychic or something now. Uh, W2BNY in the morning AM gang. AJ1G. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> AJ1G in the group. This is W2BNY. 
Yeah, I'm flipping back and forth between my web SDR and uh, local receiver, and I forgot to turn the uh, the audio off on the uh, on the computer. So, anyway, got that straightened around. Yeah, okay. On uh, cleaning out the shack there a little bit in the back uh, back of the tables and putting up some shelves there, Chris. Um, um, sort of reminds me of um, uh, the clean out I did here in the shack. Uh, Yesterday, about once a week, I, I vacuum uh, the floors and dust everything down, trying to keep the, the dust level off of the um, the equipment. I uh, sort of grew up in the uh, telephone industry. I was with uh, New York Telephone, 9X, Verizon for about 23 years. I remember the central offices that uh, uh, that uh, New York Telephone used to operate. Um, a lot of electromechanical switching equipment, and uh, they had crossbar switches and steppers that were still in operation when I started with them. And uh, the guys that maintained the central offices was absolutely amazing. They, uh, they would um, dust the floors once a day, uh, and you'd go into the central offices and you'd see, you know, bright, shiny tile on the floors, and then you'd see the guys working on the switches, uh, cleaning the contacts, and uh, and maintaining those uh, monstrous uh, electromechanical uh, telephone switching uh, gear, uh, crossbar number five, I remember, and some of the, uh, the step switches. But those, uh, those craftsmen in the central offices used to maintain uh, you know, absolutely pristine equipment, and uh, they would keep the surroundings um, and the floors and the walls uh, dust-free. And I think that sort of rubbed off on me when I when I started putting a shack together, because I, I I tend to to keep it uh, as pristine as those central offices were kept. So um, anyway, yeah, uh, Chris, uh, your grandson on the snap circuits, that's a, that's a great introduction to uh, electronics. And uh, Perry, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, having your son do some soldering work. I haven't seen the, um, the YouTubes of that, but it sounds interesting. Uh, great start for those uh, young fellows. Uh, sort of takes me back to uh, my youth when I was years old. From uh, Crystal Radio sets, uh, I don't know if you guys remember or heard about Night Kit, but it was one of my rad electronics. If you order a Night Kit kit, they had like 10 in one or 20 in one different types of kits, and what these were uh, were a, um, a, a a kit where you could build a AM radio and you could build photoelectric uh, switching devices. And, you know, there were all different types of things. Uh, you, you could build a transmitter, low power, of course. Um, and um, not only did you get the thrill of uh, completing a kit, uh, but after you did that, you could change it around to, to do one of the other options. And you got uh, experience in soldering and, and learning about components and learning about circuits. So those, those were a lot of fun. And uh, those snap in uh, Lego type things uh, sound a little bit like that. I don't know if there was any soldering involved, but uh, but it's uh, a great way to start uh, young fellows off in uh, an interest in electronics and hopefully they'll graduate from that into uh, into ham radio at some point. And um, what else here? Kevin, uh, Wisconsin Kevin, uh, talking about some of the areas around uh, Buffalo, the Kissing Bridge area, uh, which is a ski uh, resort. There's a handful of ski resorts to the south of Buffalo. And uh, this year we've been having a tough time trying to keep uh, snow on the slopes. Uh, temperatures, uh, they actually have snow-making machines. When it's below 32 degrees at night, they, they turn these snow-making machines on and actually make snow and spray it on the, uh, on the slopes. So that keeps them busy uh, during this period of the year as they try to build the mail up. 
and then they cross their fingers and hope that uh, um, Mother Nature has to bring some like like snow to keep uh, that piece uh, enough for a um, and then the season. So they're having their hands full, but I think they're going to get a lot of help they see from Mother Nature. And okay, Kevin, on uh, the pre-op, I know we're following along on the surgery dates and. Um, um, you know, it, uh, as I said yesterday, um, I'm, I'm sure it's going to go well, but, you know, it's one of those hurdles you want to, you, you want to get it done as soon as, um, as soon as possible and, uh, you know, get to the, uh, uh, the post-surgery uh, stage and the recovery stage. So, we're thinking of you and following along pretty closely as much as we can. Now, with that, Perry, I don't know if you're operating the DX100, but you're pegging the meters here in Buffalo, 40 over, and uh, great sounding uh, signal here this morning, so we'll pass it down to you. W3MMR in the group, Perry did take it. This is uh, W2BNY Buffalo. Just dragging my feet for a second there because I thought I heard Gary uh, back before Kevin Z and I uh, transmitted, and <clears throat> I think that's who the breaking station was. But <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't heard him trying to break in since. Uh, so yeah, good signal down here as well for you, Steve. I'm on the Anon this morning. I haven't used the DX100 in about a week. I should probably fire that thing up. You know they say uh, use it or lose it. Right, but uh, maybe we'll get on that uh, this week. You know, I'm just on the Anon and AL80B and the 80 meter doublet, the regular, uh, the normal setup here, the normal go to. Uh, but actually, yeah, Steve, he did do some soldering there, but they weren't snap circuits, it was just I stuck some capacitors and resistors and stuck the leads so I got the it's like it's, it's wafer board you know like these little perf boards and got a ton of little holes and you could build circuits on them and solder them on the back side and just, uh, did it on there and had them solder the stuff together and then had them uh, taught them how to lengthen wires and uh, solder two pieces of wires together and taught them how to tin the wire first and then had him heat shrink the connections and using the heat gun and had him attach an LED and a solder resistor to the hot side of the to the 12 volt side of the LED and and a uh, 440 ohm resistor and and uh, had him hook it up to a 9 volt battery and he was uh, he was very happy very happy that's for sure and he I think he has some of those snap circuits down at his mother's house I think I remember <clears throat> him telling me about that or seeing a video that his mother sent me or something uh, but I think he does have uh, uh, something like that and uh, real good on the surgery Kevin I uh, bet you're looking forward to that and getting it done and over with you know it's, and then the last uh, couple weeks here before it uh, before the big day you know Usually when time drags if you're thinking about it, but if you're not thinking about it, you know, it'll be here before you know it. Uh, you know, if you're not stressing it, not dwelling on it, it'll be here before you know it, and uh, you can get it done and over with. And hopefully it's a painless, as painless as can be uh, there. And everybody's signals are holding up pretty decent. Yeah, I agree. There's just some static on the band. There's some lightning. I check lightning maps. Uh, .org, and there's some uh, lightning down in southern Louisiana, and there's also some lightning out in the uh, in the Atlantic. But I think what we're hearing is coming from from down south, because uh, the lightning out um, in in the uh, in the Atlantic is pretty far out there. It's about halfway across uh, the big uh, the big ocean there. So I'm not sure if well, we, we 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 could we know we could be hearing a little bit of both. So well, what do I know? I don't know nothing. <laughs> What do I know? Yeah, but anyway, I gotta go back to work today. And I'm trying to deal with, I found, I got some more noise here, uh, interference from my neighbor. Um, and they're not really being too cordial about it, which is not gonna make me that happy. Sounds like a plasma screen, it comes and goes. 
Anyone with SDRs knows that you see this little, it looks like a spike. These bunch of little spikes on the pan adapter. Every 40 or 50 KCs down the band. And the noise is brutal. It goes from 3885 all the way down to 3870. And it's like I said, every 40 or 50 KCs up and down the band. And it's like really, really loud down on 3820 in that area. And uh, I honed it down to my neighbor's house and uh, to the back corner of my neighbor's house. And so I wrote them a letter. I've been trying, you know, like the diversity reception is kind of worse, like an MMFJ and MFJ and noise canceling boxes. <clears throat> uh, the diversity here will be anon. And uh, it, it, it does, it, it works okay, but it'd be a lot better if the noise was just gone. <clears throat> so I wrote them a letter, put it on their front door, they called me. Uh, later on the de that day, explained everything to him. Explained that I had the power company out here, and they said it has nothing to do with them, that it's coming from this house, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And uh, told him that whatever it is, I'll fix, I'll come over and fix it. It's only going to take 10 or 15 minutes of your time. It's not going to cost you anything. If something needs to be replaced, I'll pay to have it replaced. If it's your television, I'll buy you a new television. You know, to me, it's I would be like, all right, whatever, yeah, come over and fix, you know, come over and fix it, do whatever you got to do, you know. And but, but that's just me. So they said, all right, call, you know, call me when you when you, when you get off of work and uh, come by and uh, we, you know we'll figure it out. I call after I get off of work, no answer. So I call the next morning around 10:30, 11 o'clock, no answer. So I write a text message and say, hey, I'm just trying to set up a time, to, you know, to maybe after work we can come by. And the response was, we contacted the power company, which is Pico. They'll let you know your phone. They'll, they'll, let, they'll let you know their findings. And that's all they said. So I have to think they're trying to play hardball or don't want to, obviously don't want to, don't want to work with me here. So I called the power company myself and, told, and asked them to come out. And it's been a few days. I don't know if they came out or not. And, uh, you know, I emailed my guy. He's an engineer at the power company. I haven't heard back from him yet. Uh, he's been coming out here and heard noises before, so hopefully he'll be able to help, possibly. And uh, hopefully maybe I'll, I'll hear something from the power company today. But if I have to, I'll get the FCC involved, you know. You just want to be like that. Because, um, you know, they have to have to get rid of the noise. It's, it's their responsibility. Uh, so... If they want to go go through all that crap, I'll go through all that crap. But yeah, it's a brutal noise, and I'm trying to take care of it. So it's not too bad this morning with the with the phasing, uh, the diversity reception here in the Anon. Uh, but if you watch some of my videos, it's you know on YouTube you may have seen it on the pan adapter there because it's it's pretty brutal and it's a real loud buzz, and it's about 10 to 15 over S9 when I'm centered over top of it, so it sucks. <laughs> but that's the joys of living in the city. Back down to you, Kevin. Uh, kick a 4 gz Q and drag your feet, see if uh, Gary's in there. Uh, W3MMR. Hey, Gary, I was going to take go ahead and, uh, and pick it up down there, and I'll do my best to hear you up here. Uh, it's not your normal copy. Uh, WZ4NKA in the group. Pick it up, Gary. Good morning. Kick a 4 gz Q. Passing it back up here to Kevin. KA2 ZNI. Great copy on Kevin. Go oh, I forgot to say good morning to uh, Chris. AK1G a little earlier. I think I missed you on the front end of it, Chris, and uh, your S9 down here this morning. And uh, and uh, uh, Perry Strong and, and uh, Steve is strong from Buffalo. 
get interesting uh, when you guys get to talking about that lake effect, how the, you know, the system will pick up the uh, moisture off the lake and redeposit it, just throw it right up there on, on the bank at, uh, at Buffalo. <laughs> uh, Mother Nature, I tell you, amazing thing. Uh, it's been 30 years ago since I've had hernia surgery. I had one back in the, around 1990, and it was a lower hernia. I've been through it before, but they say uh, that the technology today is so much better. So really, I'm probably making a mountain out of a molehill, but, uh, you know, I, I can't help it, guys. If they're going to cut on me, and I don't give a darn how easy they make it sound, they're still going to be cutting on me and putting mesh in me, so... I'm concerned about it, and I just want to be in top form when I go in there, both uh, physically and, and, and I guess mentally as well. And um, uh, one of you, I believe it was uh, Bill Rock talking about the night kit, yeah. Uh, it's not, I guess it's the same kit that the T-150 is made, made, made from, Steve, night kit. Anyway, it's a pretty uh, interesting piece as I had a little amplifier in the night had a pair of uh, 6LT6 uh, vacuum tubes in it uh, from way back when, and uh, it was a pretty nice little piece. I think that's the only thing I've ever owned from night. And, uh, that's about it, guys. Uh, good morning all the way around. Harry, good to hear you. You were copyable here about 75%. So thank you all, and let me pass it on up back up to Kevin. Uh, KA2ZNI and the group KK4GZQ. I'll copy, Kim. So 
want to hear about your uh, family or parent, you know, a lot of issues, power noise issues. Um, I, I, I've been fortunate, knock on wood, both times I've had their problems in two different locations. They've addressed that uh, right away. When I lived down in Pennsylvania, Tunnel Act there, we had Tunnel Act. And some power line there, they pulled it up and they actually sent a crew out the same day and could not believe it. I contacted them at 8 o'clock and 11.30 in the morning, there was a guy knocking on my door. We uh, were up on the floor uh, back behind the house and we uh, found a, uh, a jumper on the transformer that had been shorn out in Arkham and we uh, replaced the head and everything was going. And then the, uh, the power line issue I had here at this house, uh, they sent me a full of supervisor to come out. After I look at the phone and I call them and email them, the uh, supervisor would come out and ask me if I wanted to go ride with them to show them where it was at. We went and we took a ride up, told them to turn on his AM radio, and they were over there the, uh, the, uh, the power line was for the radio, completely wiping out any uh, radio stations in the bag. Next morning, Sent a crew of uh, trucks out here with, uh, you know, some manpower. And uh, about an hour and a half, two hours, my uh, power line noise was gone. It went from uh, 10 over 9 to uh, non-existent. You know, standard band noise, S4, S5. So hopefully you uh, come to some kind of resolve and have uh, some kind of work that I did. You know, I've heard a few guys uh, over the years that, you know, it's been a real bad part of the uh, power companies that blow it up or, you know, get any kind of uh, issues in folks, but we've had some pretty good work, so uh, hopefully it'll remain that way. And uh, if we have any more problems, hopefully the, uh, the power company will be just as quick to, uh, to jump on it. So then they got over to Chris there and uh, they covered everything. Oh yeah, Kevin, definitely. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a concern any time. You know, you got to get cut on and have something. And I worked on the, uh, so I only had one surgery done and I, uh, I say it now anyway, I have a fast to go get cut on me, but uh, you, know, you never know until you get to that fork in the road, but hopefully everything goes well and uh, it'll be before uh, before too long. AJ one G to take it. Uh, go ahead, Chris. Okay, very good, Kevin. KK four or K A two Z M I A J one G. Okay, yeah, good uh, good uh, uh, run around there with the gang, uh, everybody. Uh, Perry, you're booming in. You're the strongest one right now. But uh, Steve, you're very good. And uh, I would say ZNI, you're, you're kind of out in the weeds even on the SDRs, but uh, we're getting pretty much everything. And uh, and Gary down there in Deltona, kind of a nice look at your web page now. And uh, yeah, I'm about to put up, uh, maybe even today, if the weather's good, I'm going to start putting up my quarter weight 40-meter vertical. I'm going to start with, it's going to be hung off of a halyard. Uh, uh, I can get up as high as 48 feet uh, right at the, uh, where the branch is that the, uh, the halyard is hung. Certainly not going to need a run. I might even start with an elevated uh, uh, you know, elevated vertical, you know, get the thing up off the ground a bit and uh, try to make a semi ground plane. But I think my wife will be uh, not too happy with that. So maybe I'll just go with, for starters, it's going to be um, radials on the ground and uh, and uh, the halyard's going to hold up a wire element. I'm going to use, uh, what I'm making this whole thing out of is uh, a bunch of old uh, green landscaping cables and uh, power cords. I'm going to see if I can, uh, I'm pretty sure I should be able to pull the sheathing off those and get the individual wires out of them with not a lot of effort. You know, I'll start cutting them back, like skinning an eel, and uh, I'll get a whole bunch of radials going. I, I can probably get, I don't know, maybe 30 radials out of that. I don't know. We'll see how, I, how much I get. 
we have the meeting show sure, put down some radials uh, for uh, you know mixing 40 meter radials and 80 meter radials we eventually want to run this thing on uh, uh, here on this band uh, you know as a, as an inverted arrow light and a facility up at the top to connect the link to uh, have a horizontal section I can bring in so I appreciate uh, some some thoughts on you know what sort of uh, element lengths you were using there, uh, Gary, on your setup down there, especially for 40. It sounds like you started. I'm looking at your web page and your blog here, and uh, I guess you uh, did a lot of 40 meter AM operation back in the day. And you've got some, a really cool web uh, the QRZ page, and uh, your blog is very interesting. Just starting to read that, uh, Steve. Uh, okay on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, how clean you're keeping your basement there. I, I, I'm starting to do that. Over the years, it's just in the lack of time and stuff has come in here and very little has gone out. And, uh, you know, it, the place needed a major field day on it. And Perry knows what a field day is from being in the Navy. It's not, it's not, it has nothing to do with operating radios. <laughs> it has a lot to do with Saturday mornings and, and, and cleaning, you know. Reveille, reveille up all pump bugs and hands turn to to clean up ship. <laughs> heard you heard that a few times in your uh, career in the Navy, uh, Perry. Anyhow, uh, yeah, that's, that's interesting in the central office. We have uh, here across the river in Westerly, apparently it's the first automatic switching uh, central office that was put in commission anywhere in the United States. And it's still in operation. I think I got a tour there one time. I just went over and, and you know introduced myself and got a got a, a tour from the gang. Yeah, it, 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 they're quite a place. The thing I remember having the, the biggest memory I have of that place was the uh, was the big banks of the uh, the, the Excite storage batteries. <laughs> you know, for the backup power that they had in there, for the ringing current and all of that stuff. Uh, yeah, I know a good bit about that. Both my grandfather, the one who got me in the ham radio, the one who gave me the Scott, uh, uh, AJ Content, uh, whose initials I bear in my call sign and my previous call sign, AJ2O. At least I got the AJs in there. Um, he started with the phone company in New York, downtown New York City. He was like 18 years old maybe 19 years old. I think it was 19 years old, 1917. And uh, he got, he was working for the phone company and no sooner than he started working for him, the, when the war, we went, went into World War I, entire operating outfits of the, uh, the telephone companies were, uh, you know, poof, you're in the Army, you're in the Signal Corps, and they sent him over to France to string wire and stuff like that. And he, uh, he was a telephone pioneer. He got my dad a job as a t uh, when they, my mom and dad got married in the early 50s, uh, got him a job in uh, New York Tell in Westchester County. He started out as a splicer's helper. You know, was in the line gang, became an installer, and then a central office installer, and then he was on big job sites like IBM and White Plains and things like that. Then he went into management, retired, uh, you know, during the buyouts in the late 60s, early 70s, and was back as a contractor. He was down at uh, 140 West Street down in downtown New York as a contractor. And then, uh, and then stopped doing that. But he, you know, he had a very long career. I actually worked for him one summer. You know, they would have, uh, they'd bring in employees as summer hires, especially if they were in engineering. I did that one summer to telephone disconnects in, uh, in Westchester County out of the White, in the White Plains area. And also did pre-wiring. That was fun. <laughs> They gave me a truck and a whole bunch of cable and wire and a, a, a electric, a portable electric drill, which was a wet cell battery and a lunchbox, I think. And um, they, they just said, go drive around, look for houses being under construction, talk to the contractors, and you know, nine times out of ten they'll, they'll let you in to go string wire. So I did that. Had a few mishaps on that, but I will say that for another time. <laughs> And uh, so I, I actually did that for one year, and then my dad, like I said, he was an, ended up being a pioneer. So yeah, uh, interesting. I wonder exactly what you know what your chain of uh, jobs was in the telephone company out there. So uh, Kevin, uh, good luck on the hernia. I, I don't know how extensive the surgery's got to be, but uh, it, it can be fairly simple. I, uh, Diane's uh, mom developed one, and I think she was, it was like a day surgery thing. She was in and out. They didn't even keep her overnight. Hopefully that'll be the case for you. And, 
I don't know if you ever had major surgery before, but that one is, I guess it's fairly simple. The first thing I can relate to is, uh, you know, colonoscopies where they take out, uh, uh, it's not, it's a, I think they call it conscious sedation. You're not, you're just sleeping. <laughs> And you don't have, you're not, you're not full, full an, anesthetic or anything like that. And they, whatever they give you, you feel great when you wake up. I know that. And it goes really quick, you know. The next, you're counting down when they first start giving it to you. You get down to about eight, and the next thing you know, you're waking up again, feeling really like you had the best sleep of your life. So hopefully it'll go smoothly for you. So let's see. I guess it goes over to, uh, was I turning? Oh, it goes to Steve. And Steve and then to Perry. And, uh. Yeah, probably okay on your trials and tribulations with your EMI. Wish you luck on that. Sounds like your uh, neighbors aren't as going to be as friendly as you thought they would be. Sounds like it's a plasma plasma TV or something. I wonder if they got solar panels. Boy, that's something I've been concerned about. Uh, I think we I've got some broadband energy that they kind of like it's it's seems to be I can't tell it's because the antenna is resonant around this portion of the band or the actual energy is is peaking around this portion of the band but it sound, always sounds like an engine idling and sometimes it'll actually stop and I don't know why it stops but it's somewhere in the neighborhood and I think it might have something to do with neighbor solar solar panels but it's not bad enough that I'm really you know desperate to do anything about it, just kind of live with it. It's only really evident really during the daytime when the noise levels are low and the AGC comes way up on the receivers. Anyhow, over to you, Steve. And, yeah, so what's uh, what was your telephone history, your telco history there, New York Tel? Uh, W2BNY in the morning AM gang, AJ1G. Okay, Chris, AJ1G, W2BNY, in our expanded uh, 3885 group here. This yeah, I was uh, honored to spend 24 years in the uh, in the Bell system, good old Ma Bell, and uh, it was quite an experience. I was hired into the company on the management side and spent most of my time in uh, sales and their commercial departments. Uh, which was sort of strange to me because with my interest in uh, electronics and electricity, I never really got into the uh, the uh, installation side or the central office side of the operation. But I had a chance to see a lot of their uh, a lot of the inside parts of uh, of, the, of the telephone network and how it worked and the guys and things that kept things working, the switchboards. Uh, all of that was the traditional female type job back in the day, and uh, watching their toll boards and their and, and the switchboard operators and the central office people was fascinating. And uh, Chris, you're talking about your grandfather in uh, hired into New York Telephone uh, just before World War One, and uh, then he got uh, drafted, I assume, uh, into the army and uh, served his time. And, uh, yeah, there were a lot of guys that uh, were former military that went into the bell system. I suspect what they did with your, your granddad, they bridged his service, which is to say after he got drafted, uh, they, they still counted that time that he served in the military uh, toward, uh, toward his total service uh, with New York Telephone. And uh, the bell system was famous for that. One of the things the the bell system did, and it this particular thing caused um, uh, many of the employees to become sort of fanatical mob bell employees. But during the depression, uh, the bell system never laid anybody off. What they did is they kept everybody on the payroll. They short timed a lot of people. Uh, but they kept them on, on the payroll through the Depression, and um, after the Depression was over, uh, most of those employees felt a very, very strong uh, loyalty to the Bell system and were very thankful for that, uh, for that policy. And okay on the uh, Navy experience, Chris and, and, and Perry, uh, yeah, cleaning, keeping things ship shape and cleaned up. <laughs> I guess that's one thing that Anybody who's been in the military, they, they learn pretty quickly. And um, those are the kinds of experiences that stay with you, uh, you know, through, through your lifetime. And I've got a 
commend you on uh, your persistence in uh, trying to uh, correct the interference that you're experiencing from a neighbor. It sounds like you're doing all of the, the right things. Um, persistence is, uh, is important, and uh, obviously good communication, which you are doing with your neighbor, and with the power company, I think is eventually going to uh, to pay off. It sounds like a, uh, a classic approach uh, that the ARRL would be proud of uh, in terms of uh, trying to solve an RFI problem. So we'll be interested in knowing how that uh, how that comes out. And Kevin, I um, I apparently missed the fact that you had had previous um, surgery uh, in 1990. And uh, so, you know, you've been through it before, uh, so uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, you can reflect back and as you say, things have uh, improved in terms of procedures and the type of meshing that they use, so uh, I'm sure it's going to have an excellent uh, outcome. Uh, I'm going to uh, pass along my seven threes uh, for now. I'll be listening out here to uh, to, to a good part of the uh, uh, remaining transmissions here on 3085. Uh, anybody that didn't receive my New Year's um, um, comments, I uh, want to wish a Happy New Year to everybody. And I'm not receiving Gary um, and the WB4NKA, and he's probably not receiving me, but um, I will pass it uh, to him. And again, uh, seven threes to all, happy new year to all, and uh, hopefully we'll hear everybody back on uh, tomorrow morning. What a great game. I, I really, um, it, it, it's a great way to start your day, uh, getting on AM and 3885 and having the, um, the privilege to talk to all you guys here every day. So my thanks to all, and with that, off to Gary, WB4NKA in the group, W2BNY in sunny Buffalo, New York. I think it comes to me and then to Gary. Right, Kevin? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Perry. All right, no problem. Anyway, 7-3, Steve. Have a good one, buddy. It's always great to hear you in here in the morning. I'm going to make this my final as well <clears throat> but uh, i got a few comments to make here first i want to say hi to uh, a, fr a guy who's listening on the web scr his name's art k6afw uh emailed me and said he was listening in on web sdr to us uh unfortunately he's not on the air because of a house fire um that that uh, i guess destroyed everything and uh hopefully he gets back on the air soon so uh, if you're listening art we're praying for you buddy and hopefully we can you, you you can get back on the air here soon and hop in here with us in the mornings and because as you hear it's a great uh Great group of guys uh, that gets in here in the morning, so hopefully we'll hear you on the air soon, Art. And uh, with that being said, we got a uh, real good on the 30-meter vertical, Chris. Uh, hopefully you can get that up soon and uh, without uh, too much uh, uh, stress to the uh, to the XYL. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to put up a 2 meter 440 vertical here um, at the house because we just had a uh, <clears throat> a local uh, repeater that came back here online it's a uh, and um, <clears throat> the 440 uh, a repeater that came back here online that was down for a while um, due to uh, malicious interference and jamming and so they shut the repeater off for about eight months and uh, they, they, they finally just turned it back on and uh, they kind of active on there and uh, I was thinking about putting up a two meter vertical so I can, and uh, 440 vertical so I can work my father simplex uh, between here and, uh, and his QTH, which is about 30 miles away. So it shouldn't be an issue when he's got a, uh, a Yasu FT897D that he said he, uh, he would let me use for now until I can uh, uh, get one myself. Because I don't have a, um, I have a couple HTs, but I don't have an actual, you know, 50 watt. Uh, a 2 meter 440 rig. I was looking at the 897s um, online and the, uh, what is it, the FT991 um, as well, the ASU. 
Um, so I'm looking uh, in the used market for uh, for either one of those. But uh, the FT991 looks uh, looks pretty nice. I might I don't know if if you guys have ever owned one. Uh, Chris, you may uh, may be able to speak on that. I know you do a lot of mobile operation and uh, field operations. Uh, so. Uh, but nevertheless, that's uh, what we're going to try to get going here as a, as our next project. As far as solar panels go, Chris, I know I've heard the same thing that you've heard um, about hellacious interference. But on the other hand, um, where, over where my father lives, there's a lot of people over there in the country who have solar panels. And he hasn't, his next door neighbor has solar panels and uh, hasn't, he hasn't had any issues. And there's probably four or five different uh, residences on his road that have solar panels as well. And he hasn't had any, any issues yet. Um, I think they've uh, been able to, uh, um, you know, make some strides in, in, um, in RFI suppression. Uh, as far as the solar panels go, uh, so hopefully, uh, maybe it's not solar pa solar panels. Maybe it is, but hopefully, whatever that noise is, the like the engine idling noise. And I've gotten that that noise before on 10 meters. I know what you're talking about. It would come and go. When it would fire up, it would sound like a generator. To me, it would sound like a generator running. I don't know if that's kind of what you're hearing, but it would come out of nowhere and it would raise my noise floor about an S unit. And it would just sound like an, an idling generator, and then it would shut off. And it was kind of in the in 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 the pattern of like a heater, and it would only happen in the winter months. So I think it was somebody's furnace, um, you know, or or something uh, similar, maybe a space heater. I, I don't know, but it would come and go. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, I, I don't have that issue here on 80. It's just that that uh, RFI that's you know a few places in the band that's the same. You know, it's it just every 40, 50 KCs up and down the band. Uh, Steve, yep, I know exactly where it's coming from. I, I went through this with another neighbor, but luckily that neighbor was very cordial. As soon as I wrote him a letter, he called me. He said, uh, you know, we'll figure it out, blah, blah, blah. We'll get together this weekend. Then he texted me a few days later, and he, he was like, is the noise going? I said, well, let me check. I'm not on the air. And uh, he was over there trying to shut off breakers and trying to fix it on his own. It was being really super. Could not have been a any nicer about it. And, I mean, that guy was great. But now the neighbor on the other side of me here is, is giving me a little more stress. So I don't know if I'm going to have to go through the ARRL. Um, you know, after the power company comes out, I'll figure out what the power, if the power company came out uh, today, I'll give them a call, and uh, we'll see uh, what, what they found. Hopefully they came out. I know what they're going to say. They're, it's not our issue, because I already know where it's coming from. And it's in the house. It's not power line noise. I already knew that, but I'm just going through the, the formalities uh, at this point. And I'm documenting everything. I'm documenting, you know, the time and the date of, of every each phone call, of each text message, the time and the date of when I called the power company, um, so on and so forth, and having it, you know, all, everything documented uh, here to, to take if I need to go to my, 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 my radio club or take it to the ARRL. See, I don't know how it would work if I take to go to the ARRL first and they send them a letter, or do I go to the FCC and do they send them a letter? Um, they're renters, so do I go to their landlord? Um, is the next step to go to their landlord before I go to the ARRL? RL, you know, uh, so I, I don't know. I, so I was maybe thinking of going to their landlord before I, you know, I do anything with the RL or FCC to go above their head and be like, look, man, you know, this is something that needs to be, you know, I'm a licensed amateur. It's something that has to be taken care of. I'm not trying to be a, a quote unquote dick about it, but you know, it's it's making you know some frequencies that I use frequently. Uh, they'll get that frequencies that I use frequently, you know, unoperable, and I can't use my stuff. You know, and throw the whole emergency management, you know, spiel at them. <laughs> you know, uh, I listen to hurricane nets and then these frequencies for emergency management and blah, 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 and make it sound all good. And, and hopefully he'll help. I, I don't know. So, you know, I, I don't know about the next step because the last neighbor, the friend, which was the first time I dealt with it, was, you know, very nice about it. So anyway, that's the story here. That's all I got. And 7-3 uh, to you guys. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening to my old buzzard. And uh, we'll talk to you guys until tomorrow morning. 
Um, and, uh, yep, that's all I got. So, Happy New Year, everyone. 7-3. And down to you, Gary, if you're, uh, if you're still hearing me. 7-3, guys. Talk to you tomorrow. W, uh, WD4NKA from W3MMR. 7-3. And there's Charlie.
Okay, Gary. Well, you 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 got up pretty strong there on that last one. Uh, WD4 NKA with P4 FNY recognized. Morning, Charlie. Good to hear Charlie on this one. Big signal. And Charlie, I'll turn it to you and pick it to you up. And if you can go ahead and send it to Wisconsin up to uh, KE2ZNI. And we're going to give Kevin a good listen on his audio this morning. He's clicking around on it, son. So, uh, big signal too, Charlie. Gary, thank you. I appreciate your, your comments, your positive comments on healing and the body's uh, uh, a power to, to, to heal itself and the fact the good Lord gave us that. And, uh, yeah, you know, pretty uh, much uh, 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 of what it needs to be. But, you know, the, the, the kind of impression I had that was a more done in the pelvic area. I don't know, it was about the mountain and, uh, you know, just any small movement, whether you coughed, whether you, anything, I mean, it, I can't put any pressure, it hurt. And it was pretty painful. So this one's up higher, right in the, above my, my, my navel, if you will, and uh, just a few inches. And uh, uh, he says it's going to be no sweat. So I'm just, I, I have good faith in that doctor. When I met him, I was impressed with him and, and their whole operation. So. All I can do now is pray, Gary. So thank you for that. 7 3 to Steve. And Steve, it is always a privilege to get in here with these guys in the morning. So I'm, I'm like you. I always say it's a pleasure and a privilege. And uh, one of you guys mentioned, I believe it was Steve or Perry, said that K6AFW was listening this morning remote. Good morning to you. And uh, glad you listened along. And. Uh, and Perry was talking about uh, setting up a system to talk simplex, I guess, on VHF with his father. They're 30 miles away. And Charlie, somebody mentioned some solar panels. And I would love to, I would probably like to have some experience with one of those one of these days. Even if it's just a small one. I know they make some that, uh, that, that are just really, uh, really small current that are pretty neat for recharging cell phones and things of that nature. And then, Charlie, one last note here before I turn it over to you. Yesterday, we had a 50-year reunion here on the air. I think he said 50 years. It's been a long time. Gary can verify, but M480Q was in here, Henry, and uh, he and Gary hadn't talked in years and uh, got to uh, get back together here on the morning group. K4FNY to take it. Good morning all the way around. KK4GZQ. Send it to Kevin, Charlie. Over. Okay, Kevin, give, uh, give me a quick point. You're talking about uh, the, the house fire, over. Surely there was a double with you. I believe it was Jimmy out in Texas, K5 NSN. I think that's who that was. Uh, go again, uh, Charlie, and uh, maybe pick up, uh, see if that was Jimmy, huh? Okay, uh, breaking station, uh, go ahead. This is K4FNY. No fire agent in the uh, echo. November in India. That was NAIE. Something way in the background here. KK4 Red Q. K4 FN. Well, I heard that uh, that reunion yesterday. I just didn't pick up the microphone, Kevin. I was uh, lurking in the background here. Uh, uh, not, not saying much. I had to get much sleep. That that night, that, this night I did slept, slept really well. In fact, I overslept. It was 5:30 before I got up. But you know, those solar panels, there was an article in the QST about some of those things. Well, it's been six months for a week, and my experience with them is that, that you know, dollars per kilowatt, they're still really expensive, uh, but. Uh, you could have quite an investment if you, you know, here we have quite a lot more sunny days than you do. And uh, using historical data, I guess, on sun, sunlight, you could probably calculate uh, how many of those things you need to run at your house. So, uh, you got uh, uh, the one here in the neighborhood of Scotland. Now, there are a few uh, traffic signals have those solar panels on it. Uh, I think they're LED traffic signals, and they have a little, little spot. 
Ham Charger will sell. But uh, there's a ham in Stephen George I've talked to. I can't remember what it's called, but it's off the grid completely. Uh, not connected to uh, the power company at all. And he uh, is using some batteries that he purchased at an auction. There was central office that could change uh, batteries. Uh -huh. The power company was going to use their batteries. Converters on or the inverters on those things. Maybe what's making the noise. Uh, I haven't I haven't done any studies on that. Uh, it was really when I retired. Before I retired, it was fine, but I wasn't involved in it. So uh, at the time, which is that was about eight years ago, about those for kilowatts, it, it just takes a long time to recover your investment. So uh, I guess if you've got the money, you're building a house, it might be easy for them to do it. Here, Henry, and uh, I'll turn it up to Trouble um, uh, up in Wisconsin, KA2. Uh, if you copy, go ahead. This is K4 FNY. KK. And the other breaking station was, uh, good morning, Art. The other breaking station was November 8th, India Echo, Kevin. Over. Good morning, Art. I'm going to make a couple of quick comments before I pass it to uh, N8IE. And then if I got it right, uh, N8IE, you'll uh, pass it over to Okay. So, uh, sorry about that. You'll pass it over to Art and for uh, JK. Yeah, good morning. Uh, let's see, good morning to Charlie. Charlie, you're coming in, coming in good up here this morning. Yeah, uh, just fine. And uh, good uh, good signal up here this morning. You're about 5 to 10 over 9. Really good conditions here. Uh, good morning to Arthur Brooklyn. Uh, oh, you're, uh, you're coming in up here this morning. So it sounds like the, uh, the band is open to the south here. So uh, it's nice to have some uh, good conditions here this morning. Uh, 